Welcome back, everyone, to 88.7 FM, The Edge. You're listening to the second episode of Hawk Talk with your host, Connor, and I introduced myself last time. And our guest today is Kevin Dorley. And Kevin, if you want to introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah, sure. Um, hi, guys. My name is Kevin Dorley. I'm a senior here on the New Pulse Mass Soccer Team. I'm a double major in business analytics and finance with a minor in economics, and I'm from Pearl River, New York. Awesome, my dude. So just to get into it a little bit, just tell us how you're doing. Like, how are you, how are you dealing with everything that's going on in today's crazy world? Yeah, you know, I, I can't complain. I still get the opportunity to like, hang out with my friends, you know, um, see everyone on the team. So, you know, it's it could be a lot worse. So I can't complain, to be honest. Yeah, what are you, I agree. How are you feeling? I'm doing all right, my man. I mean, can't complain. Just same with you. Just happy to have the opportunity to be up here and spend one last year with my friends. Yeah. But to go into your season a little bit, I mean, I know all the fall season sports seasons got canceled. And I mean, like, how, how did you feel like when you got that news? I mean, you had to be pretty bummed out being that you're a senior on top of having like, you know, like a, a pretty exciting uh, group, of, group of guys you got. You know, I know you guys are pretty legit. Yeah, you know, it's definitely really disappointing, especially coming off of last year. Um, yeah, it's just, it's tough, you know, to deal with. It's your last year. This is when you expect, you know, to work it. You know, uh, it's just tough. Like, it's hard to even talk about. But, um, yeah, you know, yeah, we had a good group of guys coming back. Um, we had all the tools we needed to succeed. Um, so we were looking forward to, you know, doing the best we could, but not getting the chances. It's definitely tough. Yeah, I mean, how, how have you been handling it, processing it, and, like, trying to stay motivated? Because, like you said, we were chatting a little bit before, but I know you guys, your practices have started, and you're still participating, but how are, how are you able to stay, like, motivated, you know, without anything really to look forward to? Because I know it's tough. You know, it's it's about just developing the team for next season. You know, the freshmen, they need some guys to look up to, some guys to tell them, um, you know, show them what it's like to be part of the culture on our team. So um, it's just getting them prepared, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, it's fun. We're still playing soccer, you know. Um, yeah. Like I said, it could be a lot worse. You're right. It could be a lot worse. Um, but to go into your career a little bit and go into, I mean, I know we just talked about it a little bit, but, I mean, you've had an amazing career. I mean, you're a three-year starter, two-year first-team all-team SUNYAC, and you're on the all-time goal as a point assist leader. I mean, like, I don't know if that matters to you that much. I mean, like being being <laughs> um, able not to like play. I mean, does that really like do those stats affect you? Or are you just are you just really more worried to really upset that you just weren't able to, to get one one last hoorah with like the the guys you built this uh, culture with? Yeah, it's it's definitely more disappointing not to be able to get, be with the team again. Um, you know, stats they don't really mean much to me. Um, yeah, you want to be on a good team. You know, it's it's about winning stuff as a team, winning with Suniac, making appearances in the tournament, you know, that's what you're really going to remember. And um, yeah, that's that's the most difficult part, knowing that we don't get a chance to do that. But it yeah. also, you know, to try and get more up on the individual rankings would have been fun too. But that just would have been, you know, a piece of it. It wouldn't have been the Yeah, I mean, I was looking objective. through, I was looking through the, the archives and you're up there, man. You're like fifth on points, like, you're like top five and all that stuff. So, I mean, it's a very impressive career. And I, I mean, as much, yeah, just that, that stuff's really awesome. And it's definitely Thank disappointing you. not being able to see you out there on the field. Cause I know me and my buddies are a big fan of coming to watch you and stuff. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. But going into last season a little bit, I know you guys, just like this, this season, you were expecting a lot. I know last season you're expecting a lot because you had it just, you guys recently just bringing in so much talent and these young guys. I mean, I don't know if you want to call it disappointing or not, but it seems like you guys didn't live up to the potential a little bit, not to come off rude a little bit, but do you want to go into that a little bit, maybe what happened last season and like, you know, how how you've been trying to looking forward to this year or stuff like that. Yeah. um, I think you're exactly right. I think we were disappointed, you know, we expected to do a lot better than we did coming off of the season two years ago when we finished second. Um, But yeah, I think, when I compare, look back at the two seasons, last season, a couple of games didn't go our way, and the season before, a couple of games did go our way, and, you know, that's all it is sometimes, and I think that comes down to the mentality and just being able to grind out games, stuff like that, you know, it's 
it's such a little margin that can affect a full season. You know, just one game can affect how your team's looking at the entire season and how it's going to um, play out. So it's just taking every game really seriously, um, focusing on every game, making sure you're doing the best you can. And um, I think it adds up and eventually that's what's going to make a winning team. But I think maybe we should be taking lessons from you guys. I mean, you guys are sick. So what do you think? What do you think it comes down to? Um, I think it's just a, uh, wow. Put on, put on the spot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I mean, I think it comes down to working together to, for like a common goal. Cause every time I feel we step in the gym, we all know what we need to do to improve each other. And like, cause we all know what our end goal wants to be. And like, it, it obviously it wants to be that national championship. And if we don't perform at that level for those games, like we got to come back next practice and like, you know, push ourselves even more. And it's just kind of like a, a common goal that we all need to have. And if someone's like off the page, like you got to like, you know, force them onto that page. Yeah, it's just like sure. that, that, the hive, like, not like a hive mind, but you just, you just need to all have, all have the same goal in mind. And like, it has to be enforced throughout the team. Yeah. And just sure. push yourself every day of practice. Cause you know, you, you're in the gym, you just got to work. You, you can't take any opportunity for granted. I like that. Yeah, man. Um, but going back into your season, and uh, do you think there was any specific point in last season that was like a – that like didn't work out in your favor maybe? I mean, like I know the SUNYAC is just a, a tough, tough conference for soccer, and I know a lot of sports. And I know you guys have a, had like a bunch of nail-biter games. I think it was Buffalo State where you lost in like OT or something. Mm-hmm. I mean, like what are, the, what are those games like – do to you mentally? How do you bounce back from those? Yeah, you know, the, the game that comes to mind that disappointed me the most was away at Oswego. I, can't, I think we lost an overtime or at the very end of the game when we came back and drew level. Um, and that was coming off beating Cortland, who's, you know, always a fantastic team. So that was a, a big win for us. And then to lose a game like that was just really disappointing for me. But um you know, we have to bounce back, get better, get ready for the next weekend, which were Geneseo, which was Geneseo and I think Plattsburgh. And, you know, we lost those two games, but, you know, it was probably that weekend. That was the weekend we needed to, you know, get back on track, win those two games, and, you know, we would have had a playoff spot. But, yeah, um, yeah it was difficult. I think that weekend, those, those two games were really tough, and um, that's what, you know, maybe – put us off pace and change the direction our season was going. Cause you know, we had a great out of conference season. We, we did well. We won two really good games at the beginning of the year. The first two games of the season were against two great teams. Um, yeah. So based off of that, we thought we were, you know, on the right track. And then, you know, we lost one game, lost maybe a couple more and that's what changes your mentality. And, you know, we weren't able to rekindle our uh, performances from earlier on. Yeah, I mean, the, those, those like, big conference games coming from, like, us as well on our side, I mean, those those games really matter a lot. I mean, it's it's definitely demoralizing, like, you know, having a close nail biter like that. And I can, I can, I can relate with you on that. It's just, mm-hmm. you know, it's in yeah, the past. So you got to push through. Yeah, exactly. And with Oswego, I remember. Yeah, we... I mean, like, those teams, from my knowledge, I mean, like, Oneonta, Oswego, and Cortland, they're like nationally ranked teams. And the fact that you guys are even competing with them, you know, that's always a positive to take away with. Yeah, yeah. But we want, you know, we, we have to get to the level where we, yeah, you know, compete with them every time and expect to win those games. And yeah, I think the worst part was with us, we go, is that we had chances at the end. We were playing, outplaying them and stuff, but they ended up, you know, getting that win. And that was, um, it was tough, but we should have came back from that. And we didn't. And that's why, you know, what happened happened yeah. i feel you my man but i think i missed this point on the last time and i kind of want to hit on it right now besides i mean what is your like future plans going on man i mean i know i don't know if the nca gave your eligibility back i mean like would you consider coming back for another year to like i don't know if it would call it redemption but you know one one last <laughs> uh chance to, to play with like the guys and stuff because yeah, you know because I, I know i don't know to. like you like you know um the guys on my team that came back for one more year, but I don't know what your thought process was. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have to think about it a lot. 
uh, talked to my family, with coach, and I don't think I'll be coming back. It's not certain, but most likely no. Um, gotcha. It's a tough decision, but you know, um, I just have to do what's best, I think, for my future. Yeah, for sure, man. Understandable. Yeah. All right, now let's move into some, uh, you know, less, less, some lighter topics. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I, I know quarantine has been boring for me, at least I don't know how it's been for you, but what are like some of your favorite downtime activities that like you've picked up maybe since cor- cor- uh, coronavirus started and like, you know, just how you keep them busy? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously being in school is a lot better with the guys here. You know, we have plenty of things to do, we go hiking, walking, um, working out, just doing stuff together is the best, you know, and that's, that's the dream. And that's what, uh, that's what we're going to miss the most about college. So just, you know, hanging out with everyone, making sure staying outside, getting out of, you know, the indoors and just being locked in your computer and technology. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. But what have you been doing? Um, I have been golfing a lot. I golf yeah. with my buddies at like seven. We start off our day. De- Recently, this past couple of weeks, we like, uh, we wake up at like 730 and go golfing at Apple Green. It's a good, it's a great way to start off our day. And oh, to yeah. go that's off of that, I know that you are a four-time varsity golfer, and that's very <laughs> impressive to me, being that I love golf right now. Um, have you been playing golf? I mean, go into that a little bit, because I know, I don't know if it's just me, but I think a lot of guys in quarantine have picked up golf. So talk about that <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Let's, let's hear about your golf career. Um, okay, so, yeah, I started golf when I was really young. My dad got me into it. Um, so, yeah, I just go with him a lot, and yeah, it, I stopped playing for a while, but when high school came around, I didn't do anything in the spring, and me and my friends all played a lot, so we decided to give it a shot, and we ended up being pretty good, so we kept going with it, and, you know, it was great. We got to play a bunch of courses for free, just going around competing. Um, for your high school golf team? Yep. Yeah, for the high gotcha. school golf team. So it was a lot of fun. That It was a good group of guys, and um, it was really enjoyable. But uh, like you said, like, waking up at 7.30 is the best to play golf. Oh, that's I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if I would wake up for, at 7.30 for anything else and be happy about it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, me either. I mean, yeah, like waking up for class, dreadful. Waking up to do anything else, dreadful. I, I can wake up on a, a the easiest when, I, when I'm trying to go play golf, and it's just a really awesome way to start off your day. Have you been playing around here a lot recently? Hitting, I know there's Apple Greens, New Paltz Golf Course, or there's Casper, Casper Kills a little farther away, but mm-hmm. Apple Greens, is, I've been there twice just now. It's, you know, it's a great course, it's beautiful. Um, and I went to New Paltz golf course once with my family. Um, but I haven't really been playing much. I brought my clubs up, so hopefully I get to play more. But any of any your, uh, you. none, none of your guys, none of the guys in the house uh, you live with play? No, we just haven't really gotten around to it. They, I mean, nah, none of them play um, as much as me, I think. Besides one of them, Tommy Jelsham, um, he plays a lot. But uh, our schedules just haven't lined up yet to get around. But hopefully we will soon. And I think I saw somewhere on social media you got that little uh, putting mat outside your house. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we use that mat to work out with, and we uh we had a tea time for last week Friday, so I brought it out just to get a few putts in before going out. There. I you would you would think putting's easy, but is most definitely not. Brutal for anybody putting listening there if they can relate. <laughs> putting is uh, <laughs> dreadful. Sometimes okay. it, it can, it's very demoralizing. 100%. 100%. But to go into another topic, I know you went abroad, was it your sophomore year, second semester? Yep. Sophomore year, second semester, you went abroad to Spain. And, and I know that was like a tough, I don't know if it was a tough decision, but you were like contemplating whether or not to do it. And I know you went through with it, but maybe you want to talk about that process and like your experience in there and everything, because I know it looked freaking sick. <laughs> yeah, um, it was a tough decision, obviously, but it was something I always knew I wanted to do. Um, my parents are both from Ireland, so, you know, they've got to travel around Europe a lot, so I wanted to do the same. Um, but yeah, it was tough leaving the guys. Um, yeah, because I know you went, just, you went by yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, I had a couple friends there, um, from New Paltz that I met maybe the semester before going and just got to know them a little bit and, you know, we became good friends while we were there. But yeah, just leaving the guys on the team, you know, missing a spring season, that's, that's definitely something you have to consider. But um, yeah, yeah. I think I'm happy 
with the decision I made. Yeah, I mean, it looks looks look like a terrific time. I mean, how like you want to dive into your like experience there a little bit? I mean, like, what was your favorite part? Um, yeah, it was tough. It's tough to say my favorite part. It was it was also amazing, you know, getting. Well, to you see can you can places. highlight some of the best moments there. You don't have to. You don't have to. If it's too hard to pick a favorite part, give us give us a couple mm. of your favorites. Definitely something you can relate to skydiving. Let's say skydiving. Oh yeah, Sevilla. Um, oh, yeah, we got to yeah, you did that Newports, right? Last I year? did. That was that was. I, so I, sick. I mean, yeah, jumping out of a plane is definitely uh, <laughs> an experience I recommend everyone to have. Yeah, definitely it's scary, crazy. but it's. It, oh, I, I don't even like how to, know how to describe it. Oh, uh, dude, it's it is. You can't describe it. It's crazy. But that was that was fun. It's actually it was like a funny story of what happened. Um because like I couldn't find the place and I was walking there because like you can't drive in Spain obviously so I was sprinting around trying to find a place and it, it took me a while but I got there on time um but yeah they were speaking Spanish so it was like the safety stuff like you know I wasn't really you're like oh um, god yeah I was like yep 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 and next thing I know I was they were pushing out of plane, plane. so <laughs> yeah hey um, I mean you're still here so it must have been yeah, a good exactly. experience mm-hmm. would you ever do it again yeah I think um a couple guys on my team might try and do it um soon if we can um yeah, i mean the place in new Paltz, i think is not a new Paltz. it's like a 10 minutes away but i think it's like one of the highest ranked places in like the east coast so yeah i read that too. definitely a good place to go i mean also just where we are like just jumping out of the plane and seeing all the mountains and like floating in the parachute is an experience i uh will never forget for sure yeah i, I i'm gonna hope to uh get that chance Hopefully so. Yeah, I mean, if you if you get the if you get if guys end up going going in New Paltz, let me know how it goes because I'd love. Oh, well. Would you give any recommendations to any student athletes like looking to study abroad? Because I know I would love to study abroad, but it's just like tough with seasons and stuff. But like, do you think if any student athlete really has the opportunity, to, they should jump on it? I think so. I think for sure. You know, it's it's an experience that you can never get again. Um, you know, I got to travel to I think ten different countries. Um, I went to Africa so you know that's stuff that not a lot of people get to do in their lifetime so to be able to combine school with that opportunity I think it's something that if you're willing to do it you should jump on um, what other and, you know, just, countries did you go to um, that's tough uh, so in Africa I went to Morocco Spain England Germany Portugal I think Italy uh, Czech Republic, Hungary, Austria. Damn, man, you really, you yeah. really expanded your yeah. horizons. But I you were, to, you were like to. living in Spain, so. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I lived in in Madrid, which was honestly, I think that might have been my favorite part. You know, just exploring a different city. And um, did you find yourself just walking around the city a lot? I mean, like I probably. Oh, yeah. It was. It's such a beautiful city, and just. It's got like a great subway system and stuff. So you were able to get anywhere you wanted really quickly. And, you know, it feels almost like a big town to me compared to New York City. Cause I mean, that's what we're all used to. And, you know, no city in the world really like New York or at least that I've yeah. been to. So it just had a really nice like homey feel to it. And um, like all the local diners, like restaurants, that kind of stuff yeah, was just food was unreal. Amazing. Oh yeah, it was. I feel like that would probably be my favorite part if I went all the, the amazing food dope man all right well right now we're just going to take a little break um but we'll be right back with hop talk on next on 88.7 fm the edge someday when we aren't six feet apart all right welcome back to 88.7 the edge and you're listening to hop talk again um so Kevin, I just wanted to jump back into the soccer stuff a little bit on like, why did you choose New Paltz? Because from my knowledge, you are an exceptional soccer player and probably could have gone division one, but like, what about New Paltz did it for you, my man? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I think it had a lot to do with the team, coach, um, academics. You know, it, it comes down to a lot of different considerations and you know coach Clancy was amazing during the recruitment recruitment process um I really liked his vision and you know what he wanted to see happen in this program um and hanging out with the team doing the overnight was a lot of fun and I really liked the guys and I liked what they um 
you know, represented. So I think they made it pretty easy to make the choice. And then obviously the, the town's beautiful. There's so much to do around here. Um, so yeah, you can't go wrong coming here, to be honest. Yeah, man. I mean, I love it here. But like you mentioned, Clancy, Coach Clancy, my, my bad. But I hear great things about him. And like you mentioned, he was one of the main reasons why you came here. But can you talk about your relationship with, with Coach Clancy and like what what he did for you and his program? Because I, I mean, you guys say he's just a great, like motivate, good talker, good influencer and stuff, good coach. So yeah, I want to dive into that a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have a phenomenal relationship. He's a really good guy. You know, he pushes us to the max and, you know, it's a really good thing. It helps, you know, prepares you for life after college. So everything he does, you know, he has a purpose, a bigger purpose than just soccer. And um, I'm really grateful for that. And I've learned a lot from that part of it. Um, on the field, he's really intense. You know, he expects you to perform at your best. Uh, I mean, that's awesome that you speak so highly of him. Maybe, maybe you can talk about some of your favorite moments with him. <sighs> there's, there's a bunch, you know, some are funny, some are, you know, just... Give, give us one funny, one that. serious. Let's get a good range. Let's. Oh, all right. I think one serious. I think we were watching tape one time or we watching a goal. And when we scored, you just see him run. He, he was out of the camera frame at first. And you just see him sprint for it, jump up and celebrate like he scored the goal. It was hysterical. That's um, awesome. I can't remember which game it was, but, you know, that was hysterical. We all watched it as a team. We were dying laughing. Um, so that was that was funny, but that was also serious. So that was really quick. Like I really like that. Good one and one and uh, good uh, good one of both. That's awesome. Yeah, let me think of. Uh, God, there's so many funny ones. You know, away trips are always funny. Yeah. Um, uh, it's tough. You know, it's tough to say. It's all good. It's I, I, all good. I'll say. I'll say. I'll say. It's not too bad. I mean, there okay. was one. Well, hey, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, we. This was, I think, last year. <laughs> Mark, Mark, our goalie was he was told to wash our pennies before the next game. And, you know, so one thing led to another and he forgot to do it. And we are in the locker room and Mark's standing on the second, the second side of the locker room where you can't see who walks in. And I think it was me, Mark, Sky, Skyler Man, and I can't remember who else. And <laughs> you just hear Mark go, oh no, like, I forgot to wash the pennies. And as he says it, coach walks in and just coaches faces. Oh, it, was, it was hysterical. Me and Scott were dying laughing. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. Poor, poor Mark. Poor Mark. Poor, poor Mark. Shout out to Mark, was, though. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that was more of a funny moment with Mark and Coach. But uh, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, we have plenty of good moments as, on a, as a team. Sorry. So, you know, it's it's tough to pick one, but, you know, we probably have so many that yeah, we got I mean, yeah. can talk about. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome. The fact that you've built such a relationship with those guys and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, to to not go, not to make it like ooey gooey or sad or anything, but recently uh, I know the, the athletic department put out the top videos play of like you and that goal that you and Marty like connected on. I mean, moments like that, are you just going to miss stuff like that the most? For sure. You know, those are the big moments. That was a big game against Oneonta. There was a lot on that game. Yeah, I remember being there. Yeah, that was a. Yeah, I remember crazy. seeing you in the crowd. I, I remember. Yeah. I remember exactly that. But yeah, you know, those are the type of moments you remember for the rest of your life. And, um, you know, not to get an opportunity to make more of those is definitely difficult, and you know, it's sad. But you can always say the option. You know, grateful that I had the chance to do that. You know, for sure. Play playing big games, playing college. You know. It can always be worse. So it's it's just it's good to always remember how fortunate we are to, you know, yeah. play this for we love, even if it's for three years instead of four, you know, a lot of people don't yeah. get that chance. So it's just about making the most of it and you know, being grateful. I mean, I, I just I, I really enjoy and I think that's a great mentality to have, you know, like you know, like things can be worse. So, you know, you you blessed with the opportunity to play three years in them and it sucks that, you know, the fourth was taken away from you but you know happy for your career and i'm a, i'll be a cheer for new pod soccer for <laughs> for now but one last question before we get into like a little segment i made up Sweet. and th think about this real long and hard 
if you had a go-to goal celebration that you wish you could have done possibly that oh all right see i've never i've never had like one goal celebration that i've done but i think my sophomore year um so my my favorite soccer team is tottenham and one of the players on that team is deli alley and he was one of the guys that came up with that weird uh, yeah i don't know if you if i'll be able to describe it just from talking but it was this weird thing he'd do with his hands over his eyes to um do you remember that connor do you remember don't know that was it was maybe a year, two years ago where people were doing that thing with their their fingers in front of their eyes oh oh we're like they couldn't it was like the you do the batman yes, thing with yeah, your yeah, eyes yeah, yeah, but yeah, then you like yeah. flipped your fingers up exactly exactly it was that okay. he, so he was one of the first guys that kind of started that so i would do that when i scored um sophomore year so i, I kind of wish i kept that going i didn't do that last year should have it should have been like a tradition yeah should have but yeah that was everyone probably, that, there's still people to this day that do not know how to do that yeah it, it's hard i mean I it's like a sure. it's a simple you just gotta like flick your fingers up for like doing the yeah. batman thing but there's a second one yeah there's like there's two of them so i would yeah, do both right. i think oh man you should have kept that a tradition yeah but i think i think my hands are too sweaty to be honest during the game so like, i try tried I'd mess just do it a little up. away from your eyes yeah, it's, that's probably you gotta you gotta make one of the younger guys keep the tradition going. Call, call them sure. call one of them out right now. Uh which one? I, don't, I gotta pick which one. I think I think. Or... Hmm. Who you got? I'll give you. you I think, think I think Ryan Stevens should keep keep the tradition going on for you. Yeah, I don't know if he will. He's an Arsenal fan, so he hates. Oh he God. Hates yeah. Like... Spencer maybe. Spence. Spence maybe. I don't know. Maybe. If he'll... he'll do it he'll... for you if you root for uh, Bills Mafia. Yeah, but. I can't do that. <laughs> Fair, my man. All right. You so can I do it. How about little... you do it? Okay, fine. I'll do it. If 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 if, our, if God forbid we have a season, I will. I got you, my man. Let's go. I'll give me I second. got you. We Watch me at the sidelines that. doing that. I will be. But I came up with this little segment. It's like name that teammate. So I wrote down a couple fun Ooh. facts, and we'll see how well yeah. you actually know your teammates. All right. Sweet. That'll be fun. All man. right. First question is, who on your team has a nickname that also happens to be his dog's name? <laughs> uh, it's, that's too easy. It's Marty. Okay, okay, yeah. Ryan Marty. I would, I, yes, correct. The dog's na- nickname is Marty? Yeah. His, no, his dog's name is Marty. Yes, yes, so, yes, yes. And, yeah, that's, okay. that's so funny. Uh, okay, next one. Who on your team plays two musical instruments and can, and can you name the instruments? Um, I think there's a couple guys actually. I know my corner's instrumental. Skyler's instrumental. My roommate, he he played the saxophone, piano, and he's picking up guitar. Yeah, Corner can was... sing. Maltez can sing. Yeah, I had Skyler down. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Skyler man, yeah, yeah. saxophone and piano. Yeah, he's he's okay, good. Next one. Until he's blasting that. Who on your team? Which one of your teammates wasn't born in the U.S.? I accept multiple answers. Wow. Ryan Stevens, he was born in England. Yes. Um. I mean, Gordon wasn't. Yes. He's gone now. Yes. Who else on your team? Our freshman allowed or? Sure. I mean, I have Gordon right, and so Ryan. Oh, that's it. All right. So, like, two for two. All right, I'll take it. Yeah, man, you're killing it. Um. And the last question I have is, who was your first career, career goal assisted by? I think that was Ryan Martinez, too. I remember that right. exactly. Okay, yeah. okay. If you know it so well, for bonus points, who was the game against and what was the score? Oh, it was it was at Utica. I know it was at Utica. I don't know if it was against them. Yes, I'll give uh, yes. It was Utica? It was against Utica? It was, at, it was against Utica. It was, okay, it was against Utica. For extra points, we were looking it, for the score. Was it, that made it 2-0, or would that, I think? You want? Do you want the answer? Or you want to guess again? Was it one now? You guys Two won one? four nothing. Oh, we won! Oh, we won! I thought you were talking about when I scored. I think I no. scored the second of that game. I, and even for more points, I have the bonus. I, I have what minute was scored in. If you know that, I'd be impressed. I have no idea. Thirty sixth. I played it. Yes. <laughs> was it? No way. Thirty sixth minute. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was a complete guess. I actually. Yeah, oh, that was gonna look up like. I looked that up and stuff. I do not do that. Yeah, I mean, wow, what a great guess. I just right, knew it was like second pass. Dang. All right, that's good. That's cool. I'm very impressed. You know your teammates very well. 
but thank you for being on the episode and i hope you had fun thank you for having me and yeah